What's up guys, my name's Isaac and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I built this epic rainforest enclosure for my chameleon, Enzo. If you haven't met him before, here he is. So in this video I'm going to be talking about the background and how I built that and I'll show you how I built it as well. But um, there will be a part two to this video so if you want to learn about how I built the whole thing then stay tuned for that because that will be coming out very soon. But let's get on with the video. So for this build I used an enclosure that I already had and it was the same size as my chameleon's enclosure before. So the plan was to put down a piece of newspaper on the table to protect it from the foam that I'd later spray in the um, enclosure. But um, yeah, that didn't really work out because it was a windy day and it just ended up being really annoying and just blowing all over the garden. So I had to turn the enclosure around and do it the other way. So yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. So now that we have the frustration of the newspaper out of the way, let's move on to the expanding foam and the actual background. So obviously you want to make sure that you have a clean surface on the back of your enclosure first before you do this. And you want to test that it's actually working. So that's what I was doing here. Once you've done that, you can just go straight in and spray the foam on the back. I like to put the foam on in line so that it's even across the whole background and so that when it expands there aren't any like massive bumps in it. So yeah, that's what I was doing here and that's why I use the line method. So this is what it looked like when I finished spraying it and I left a gap at the bottom so that when I put the soil in it won't go over the background and it will sit underneath. So it usually takes about a day to harden so I left it overnight and came back the next day to check on it. As you can see it's dried and I was able to stand it up without it falling off the back. So now that it's dried I can begin carving the background into the shape that I want it to be. So I had an image of what I wanted the background to look like. And I was going for kind of like a rock background. So to create this look, I made like really angular cuts into the foam uh, to make it look more like rock. I had to make sure that I cut off all of the smooth edges because number one, it was a rock background. So you wouldn't really have any smooth edges on that. And when I paint it later on in the video, It'll be harder to stick to so if you cut off all of the smooth edges and you just have rough foam on the background it will make it easier for the paint to stay on
So as you can see, it's getting dark now and that just shows how long I was there for because it is a step that takes a very long time. Um, just because you have to cut off loads of smooth edges and like tiny little bits of foam. And if you're doing a large enclosure, then that just takes a really long time. So once I carved the background, I took out all of these shavings of foam and threw them away. And I also and I also vacuumed the back of the enclosure and the bottom just to make sure that there were no pieces of foam left so that when I do the next step, they're not in the way. So now let's move on to covering the background. So for this, I use this product called Elastopore by The Pet Factory, which are a company that do loads of, I think they do dart frog related stuff, but like also vivariums and things like that. And this product is especially made for vivarium backgrounds, like the one I'm building. So it's safe for animals and it's basically like a glue, which you mix with a pigment and then you paint onto the background and it's the color that you want. So the pigment is also by the Pet Factory and I chose the color black for this build. And this method is kind of like the alternative to the dry lock method in the UK. So if you're in the US and you wanna try this, then probably go the dry lock method because this is a German branded thing and you might not be able to get it. But yeah, if you're in the US, I would use dry lock for this. But if you're in the UK, use this method. So, so once I'd mixed it, I painted it on straight away so that it didn't dry. And this will be the first layer of doing this. So I ended up doing this twice to cover it. So on the second layer I went back over these tiny bits I'd missed with a small brush just to get all of those little white bits out and to cover it all in black. So I actually haven't seen anyone else doing this, but I went in with acrylic paint and as you can see I'm using the colour brown here, but um, this is just to make it look more natural and I think it works really well. So I'm not really just painting randomly around the background, I painted the colours on the edges that I thought if it was occurring naturally there would be like mosses and stuff growing on there. So all of the edges that had light bouncing off them I painted on because obviously moss needs light to grow and stuff and I think that would be like the most natural approach and then for the shadows I just left them alone and left them black and um, because obviously there would be nothing growing there so yeah that's how I did it so every time I paint something on there I blend it in with a piece of kitchen roll just so it's not so bright and so that it blends in better
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to leave a like and comment below and subscribe to my channel because it really does help me out a lot. So yeah, I'll see you guys in part two coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Peace.